a wide receiver I am lower on, uh, much lower on than consensus, is Michael Pittman. And Pittman is coming off the hamstring injury in week two, but he's played the full complement of snaps at weeks three and four. He's had nine and six targets. He's had five total red zone targets in the three games he's played. He's had uh, 20 receptions through his three games. So it seems like things are trending well for Michael Pittman. But if he doesn't convert, if he has a tough matchup, then that's going to be a problem. And Michael Pittman faces off against Patrick Sertain. And Patrick Sertain is one of the better cornerbacks in the league. Uh, if we look at who Sertain has shadowed, and, and Sertain shadows about 70% of the time. The only time he didn't was against Nico Collins. Um, but in weeks one, three, and four, he limited DK Metcalf to 35 receiving yards on six targets. He limited Nico Collins in only 30% snaps to 10 total yards. Brandon Ayuk had zero catches on five targets. So no yards, no catches, five targets when Patrick Sertain played against Brandon Ayuk week three. And then week four, Devontae Adams had seven catches on 12 targets for 61 yards against Patrick Sertain for pass breakups. This is a significant downgrade from Michael Pittman. Um, you know, I want to be lower than my peers uh, for Michael Pittman. I think he's a low end wide receiver too. You need to lower your expectations for Pittman. This is probably not a blow up game. They're going to have to find other, uh, other ways to move the ball. And that, whether that is um, through Alec Pierce or, or through Mo Ali Cox or other Naheem Hines, if this is not going to be a Michael Pittman blow up game, right? We always have to hedge that Michael Pittman is still very talented wide receiver, which is why I don't want to completely zero him, like how Brandon Ayuk got zeroed week three against Sertain. But Michael Pittman is uh, is facing a tough matchup, so let's let's temper expectations going into week five for Michael Pittman. 